Good evening, dear guest. Is everything fine? Good. Welcome to the Forest and Inn. What do you think about the menu for tonight? Yeah, I thought you would think so. We have everything here. Everything. Would you like something more to drink? Water. No, we do not have water. We use all the water to make beer. But we do have wine. Would you like something more? More porridge? Do you want me to put some sugar in it? Yes, yeah, sure. Have you tried our sausages? They are the best sausages in the entire land. Everyone tells us that. <laughs> so we have two different kinds. This one is a little bit more pepperish. Strong, hot, yes. And we have this one. More mild taste. Not so spicy. Mm, this one? Okay.
little more bread, perhaps. Yes, you cannot have enough of home-baked warm bread with butter. I truly believe that is the best thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you done with your dinner? Oh, did you like it? <laughs> Lovely. I will tell the chef. He will be so happy. Mm -hmm. Have you been here before? Tell me. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a famous inn. People come here from all around the country. Mm -hmm. Everyone likes our food and our beds and our stories and our, you know, special treatments. We are very, very unique in that way. We have this very modern thing called, uh, it's, it's not very modern, actually it came from old Greek and old Turkish traditions of having uh, big houses where you take a bath and you're, you get a massage. I think they're called, but they call it spas. So when we heard about that sort of things, we were inspired. So we brought it here to our little land. And uh, people that come here to stay here and to eat here can have a little story or a back massage or having their hair brushed. You know, just something relaxing. Do you like hair brushing? I will brush your hair then. Do you like stories as well? <laughs> I have stories. So many. Um, I can tell you a story. Do you like scary stories or nice stories? Or... Mm -hmm. I will tell you a story like that. <laughs> you see, this is the land of stories. In every single household, there is at least 10 stories. Yes, I mean, it's old tales, fairy tales, and um, yeah, but there are variations. Every person that tells an old story will tell it differently. So, in the end, you have a million tales. <laughs> All right, I will tell you one of my versions, and I will make sure you be relaxed, and that you will sleep good tonight. All right, let me show you your room then, okay?
So, this will be your room for tonight. What do you think? Do you like it? Good. It's one of my favorite rooms here at the inn. It's so cozy. <laughs> Alright, you just sit there in the sofa and I have a really, really nice hairbrush for you here. I like this one. It's soft, but strong somehow also. It really, really untangles the hair. And it gives a nice massage. Yeah. All right. You sit there and relax. And I will brush your hair and I will tell you a story. One of my favorite stories. Once, a long, long time ago, before the white man came to the land today called Canada, a boy was living together with his parents in a small village near the big ocean. He had no brothers or sisters, and he was often lonely. He longed for adventure and friendship. One day he decided to set out to seek his fortune elsewhere. He was just about to leave his home when people started to talk about a great dragon that had come to the land. It was doing great damage and people were terrified. It was said that the dragon took women and children and ate them one by one. But the most terrifying thing about the dragon was that it could take on human form. And often he changed himself into a handsome man in order to lure women. The chief of the tribe called for volunteers to meet the dragon man, but not even the bravest warriors responded. They were strong in combat with men, but it was a totally different thing to fight a dragon. When the boy heard about the dragon and saw the fear of his people, he said, here is my chance to do something good and great. Somehow, this boy felt that he had more than human power. So he said goodbye to his parents and set out on his adventure. He traveled all day through the forest. In the evening, he came to a hill. He said, I will climb this hill and maybe I can see all the country from there. So he went to the top. As he stood there, 
looking over the country, which he could see for many miles around. A man suddenly appeared beside him. He was a very handsome man, and they talked for some time. The boy was on his guard, but he thought, surely this man with the good looks cannot be a dragon. Where are you going? the stranger asked. I am going far away. I am seeking adventure in the forest. You see, it is very lonely down by the sea. But the boy did not tell him his real business. You may stay with me tonight, said the stranger. I have a very comfortable house, not far from here, and I will give you food. The boy was very hungry and tired, and he went with the man to his house. When they came to the house, the boy was surprised to see a great pile of bones lying in front of the door. But he showed no fear, nor did he comment on the terrible sight. Inside the house sat a very old woman with a pot. She was steering it with a big stick and the boy saw that it was meat stew in it. When she placed the stew before them, the boy said he would rather have corn, for he feared to taste the meat. The old woman fried some corn for him, and he had a good meal. After they had eaten, the stranger went out to gather wood for the fire, and the boy sat talking to the old woman. And she said to him, you are very young, beautiful, and innocent. Well, actually, you are the most handsome I have ever seen in this place. And because of that, I will take pity on you and warn you about your danger. The man you met on the hill is the Dragon Man. He cannot be killed in ordinary combat, and it would be stupid of you to try. Tomorrow, he will kill you. Take this magic moccasins that I will give you, and in the morning you put them on your feet. With one step, you will be at the hill you see in the distance. There, you will meet a man. Give this piece of birch bark with the picture on it to him, and he will tell you what to do next. But remember that no matter how far you go, the dragon man will find you in the evening. The boy took the moccasins and the birch bark with the mystic sign on it and hid them under his coat. I will do as you said. Good, but there is one more condition. You must kill me in the morning before you go and put this robe over my body. Then the dragon man's spell over me will be broken and when he leaves me I will bring myself back to life. The boy went to sleep and the dragon man slept all night beside him so he could not escape. The next morning, when the dragon man was out to get water from the stream, the boy at once carried out the old woman's order. First of all, he killed the old woman and covered her body with a cloak, for he knew that when the dragon man would leave, she would soon be alive again. Then. He put the magic moccasins on his feet, and with one great step, he reached the hill. There, he met an old man. He gave him the piece of birch bark with the mystic sign. The man looked at it closely and smiled. So, it is you I was told to wait for. The man gave him another pair of moccasins in exchange for those he was wearing and another piece of birch bark bearing another inscription. He pointed to a hill in the distance and said, With one step you will reach that hill. Give this bark to a man you will meet there. The boy put the moccasins on his feet and with one step he reached the distant hill. There he met another old man. He gave him the birch bark. This man gave him another pair of moccasins and a large maple leaf with a strange symbol. 
he told him to go another spot where he would get final instructions. The boy did as he was told, and there he met a very old man who said, Down under there is a stream. Go towards it and walk straight into it, as if you were on dry land. But do not look at the water. Take this piece of birch bark with these magic symbols, and it will transform you into whatever you wish, and it will keep you from harm. The boy took the bark and did as he was told, and soon found himself on the opposite bank of the stream. He followed the stream, and at evening he came to a lake. As he was looking for a warm place to spend the night, he suddenly came upon the dragon man, now in the form of a monster dragon, hiding behind the trees. The old woman's words had come true. There was no time to lose, so the boy waved his magic bark, and at once he became a little fish, moving slowly in the lake. When the dragon man saw the little fish, he cried, Little fish, have you seen the boy I am looking for? No, sir, said the little fish. I have seen no one, I have been asleep. But if he passes this way, I will tell you. The dragon man moved down along the bank of the lake, while the boy watched him from the water. The dragon man met a toad in the path and said, Hello, little toad, have you seen a boy I am looking for? I am minding my own business, answered the toad, and he hopped away into the moss. Then the dragon man saw a very large fish with his head above the water, and he said, Have you seen the boy I am looking for? Yes, said the fish. You have just been talking to him. Then he laughed and disappeared. The dragon man went back and searched everywhere for the toad, but he could not find him. Then he saw a rat running along by the stream, and he said angrily, Have you seen the boy I am looking for? No, said the rat. Well, I think you are he, said the dragon man. Then the rat began to cry and said, No, no, the boy you are looking for passed by just now, and he stepped on the roof of my house and broke it. The dragon man was deceived again. He went on and soon came upon an old turtle splashing around in the mud. You are very old and wise, he said, hoping to flatter him. You have surely seen the boy I am looking for. Yes, I have, said the turtle. He is further down the stream. Go across the river and you will find him. But be aware, because if you do not recognize him, when you see him, he will surely kill you. The turtle knew very well that the dragon man would now meet his fate. The dragon man followed the lake till he came to a river. He changed himself to a snake. Then he tried to cross the stream, but the boy, still in the form of a fish and still using the power of his magic bark with the mystic sign, was swimming around in a circle in the middle of the river. A rapid wild pool arose where he swam, but it was not visible on the surface. As the snake approached it, he saw nothing but clear water. He failed to recognize his enemy, and as Turtle had told him, he swam into the wire pool before he was aware of it and was quickly drawn to the bottom, where he drowned. The boy fished him up and cut off his head. Then he changed back to his own form. He went to the dragon man's house to see how it was with the old woman, but she had gone and the house was empty. Then the boy went back to his home and told what he had done. He received many gifts from the chief for his brave deed, and the land was never troubled again by dragons. But from that time the snake family was hated because its shape had concealed the dragon man. And to this day people are still mindful of the adventure of their ancestors in the old days. 
and they are suspicious of the evil power the snake family secretly possess.
you feeling now? Sleepy? Hmm. Good. I hope you will have a nice night. And if it's something that you want, like more wine or more blankets, just call and I'll come. Alright. Sleep well.